And now, for our feature presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? You're listening to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Call in to join the conversation at 646 646- Welcome to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. It's the six man Dean Geronimo in the studio with Mark Lee. We welcome you to yet another exciting episode of our show. Welcome once again to Straight Talk with Dana Marcus. Another Monday night, and I'm Dean Geronimo, of course, from NJ to NC. I'm in the studio with my man, Mark Lee. So, Mark, tell me what's good in your neck of the woods, my brother. Hey, it's been a real busy week. Uh, actually, a busy couple of weeks we've been having here in the uh, Durham Triangle area because you know that uh, we did not do the show last Monday, so the weekend before. We had the film festival, and it was rocking. We had filmmakers from all over the uh, country that came into town, you know, had a filmmaker that actually calls, um, I believe he's living in Puerto Rico right now, and uh, he came and uh, oh, showed wow. a film that he's done, oh, the whole Cuban music scene and how that scene has influenced uh, everything from hip-hop to R&B to other kinds of sounds. So he was actually the closing film, and he definitely was a powerful closing film, and he brought in a young lady from uh, Oakland, California, who is actually Cuban by descent. And uh, I'm telling you, she rocked the house for about an hour, hour and a half. And then, uh, you know, every uh, around Valentine's weekend, we always have our erotic poetry slam that the poetry folks do. And they did it again. And you better believe it was definitely some uh, erotic and some serious uh, trash talking and other kind of stuff that was going on <laughs> during that particular thing. That's why they don't even start it till about midnight. But, you know, it was rolling from about midnight to about 2.33 a.m., and uh, there was definitely some uh, wild poems that were being recited, and uh, they definitely were having a good old time doing that. And like I said, the film festival, we had amazing uh, films. There was one called Mr. Soul, which is about a brother up there in New York that had almost like a show that was similar to, uh, it was kind of like a combination of Soul Train because they had all the big entertainers of the day, and I think it was back in the 70s. Um, And they also had like some... uh, political commentary and things of that nature. As a matter of fact, they, they had uh, Louis Farrakhan on one of the shows that the guy had done back in the day. So I was not that familiar with that particular show because, like I said, at the time that it was on, I was still in North Carolina, and it sounded like it was mostly a D.C. to New York thing, but uh, it definitely uh, was a major player up there. And uh, I think the show was called, uh, might have been called Mr. Soul or something like that, but or Soul. So it was an exclamation point, but it was definitely uh, – something that you should look into if you're not familiar with that show, because I think you can still find it online. But uh, that was one of the movies that I definitely remember. There were some very powerful shorts, and there was just all kinds of uh, amazing uh, films that were shown from Thursday through Saturday. Uh, we changed up the hay tie. It almost looked like a glorified movie theater, the way they had the lights and the bigger screen and everything. And, of course, we had uh, vendors and uh, the popcorn and the, our wine buddies were there, so they were there as were our beer buddies. So I've been talking to them, and we're finally gonna get them on the show. Took us long enough, but I believe March nice. 11th we're gonna be we're gonna be finally hearing from Harlem Bruin, and also in the month of May, okay. Southern Wicked Southern Wicked Lemonade. I think the following week will be giving us a call, and I'm trying to see about uh, I think it's called Steel Moon or something something that's got steel in the title, but that's two liquor companies that are North Carolina based and. My good friend, Ralph Frazier, who's a uh, lawyer here in the area, he's one of the uh, partners in that uh, one that's got steel in the title. Uh, but uh, definitely Southern Wicked will be talking to us. So, like I said, that was rolling. So it was just a busy week all together on uh, last weekend. And then this week, 
was not much different because uh, Friday they had a dress rehearsal <laughs> and Desan, our good buddy, uh, like I said, you know, he's been a buddy of uh, your people, the Night's Wonder crew and all of that. But uh, he was uh, doing a, you might as well call it like almost a choreo poem slash sitcom and that kind of nature. Uh, but it was called Inside Studio Real. And it, uh, I got a chance to duck in there and hear a little bit of it. It's definitely funny. And uh, hopefully they'll get it around to taking some of these productions on the road. So maybe we can get up there and see what's going on in your neck of the woods. But before we get to talking to news, and we definitely want to get to talking <laughs> to your guests and everything, I do have to ask you, talking about what's going on in the world, what how the reception went. Because I believe that y'all, your wife kicked off, if I know, if I'm remembering correctly, on this past weekend. This past weekend, they sure did. Three Harlem Sisters, man, they um, actually had their soft launch at El Barrio's Art Space PS109 in New York. And very lovely event. The place was decorated beautifully. The food was seasoned just right. You needed no extra salt, pepper, or anything. And the dessert topped it off. So they all did their thing. April the event planner, Tamisha the caterer, and Janice the baker, known as Three Harlem Sisters, We'll put the information on our um, on our page so that you can contact them, get in touch with them, see what they have to offer, and also to support. But it was a very beautiful event on Saturday. I'm a little tired from moving tables, picking up tables, moving stuff like that, but it was worth it. You know, and everybody oh. came in. They had a good time. <laughs> like I said, you know I know about that moving tables and stuff. I do that regularly. And hey, Ty, I did it a little bit this weekend, but I was <laughs> worn out. I was worn out on uh, Saturday going into Sunday because I know Saturday I had a uh, almost an 18 hour day because I got up at about 7 oh, wow. o'clock so that I could get there at 8 o'clock because we kicked off everything, I think around 9 or 10, but I had to open up so that people could get set up. And then later on, after they showed the first block of shorts, and our good friend Daryl Sober did a children's uh, discussion on making film with some children around the community, but I was downstairs moderating a discussion with a uh, filmmaker, young lady named uh, something, uh, Mingo, I believe was her last name, but uh, we were talking about everything from the Me Too movement and how women are doing in the theater industry, I mean the film industry, to uh, just the film industry in general in North Carolina. She brought a couple of her people with her. I think uh, one of the actors was there and uh might have been like one or two others that were with her as part of her crew, but uh, we had a nice little discussion, and I've actually had a couple of good discussions, because on the other show that I do, you know, the one over there in Carboro, the blues show, I've had the chance to talk to two blues artists that are going to be appearing with us very soon. Kim Lentz is out of okay. Oakland. I told her about the podcast, and she said, look, I know I love talking about issues. I love talking about what women can do in the uh, music industry, so she's going to try to join us, I believe, and I think I scheduled her for either April or May and then there was a uh, brother that's uh, got a, this Reverend Peyton, and his band's got that, you know, D word in the name in it. But uh, he, he's a trip, too, and he's interested <laughs> in being on the podcast. So uh, we're going to be having both of them. And uh, he's a, uh, I think Kim might be close to your age, but Reverend uh, Peyton is actually fairly young. He might be in his, uh, I want to say maybe 30s or somewhere around that age. But he said he got into the blues and the traditional instruments like the washboard and. Uh, cigar box uh, guitars and stuff like that when he was like even much younger and he just fell in love with it and he still has a, a love for it so it's good seeing him and there's a young brother that just signed with a major label Chris Antoine King that uh, is definitely burning up the uh, blues charts and I think he might even only be in his 20s so uh, it's good to see that uh, when folks talk about things being dead whether that's newspapers whether that's radio whether that's blues music that a lot of folks are out to prove them wrong Indeed, man, and, and they have to prove them wrong because the perception sometimes is not um, favorable, but most of the time people that have the unfavorable opinion of, of that nature don't know, haven't listened to, haven't been able to appreciate, you know, so they go by what someone else may have told them. And that's not always the sensible thing to do. So no, yeah, that, definitely we we would like for them to come on and, and and get some people interested in what they have to offer and broaden those horizons and be able to grow a little bit. Oh yeah, it's all about growing, it's all about learning. But speaking of growing and learning, I've been having some conversations with some friends of mine and I gotta ask you, uh, 
Is there like some movement for celebrities to be stupid this week? Because when I'm sitting there, I'm telling that, you know, we got the guy from Empire, and I'm not buying that whole story, by the way. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't see you're an actor. You're supposed to have some friends that are in casting. And you would think so. And I can't see you casting <laughs> two Niger. I can't see you casting two Nigerian to play some folks that are supposed to be, uh, you know, Trump supporters. Right, so yeah. I just can't see you doing that. <laughs> so I, I, I'm not. I'm not buying the whole story. I you know I went to school in Milwaukee, yeah, and I know about the whole Daily Machine, and I know that Chicago's had some rough moments in its history. So, like I said, I know they put the brother up front, the brother that's in office and everything, but I'm still a little suspect of Chicago law enforcement in general. So I, I know that they say they got them dead to right, but I'm still having some questions that got to be answered. And uh, then we got R. Kelly, who's apparently looking at some major bond money, and he's apparently saying he can't come up with it. Part of it is he still well, owes child support in the, about that same amount. <laughs> and then the last question I got to ask you about celebrities is, sorry, just one okay. last question is, Mr. Kraft, um, you got all this money. <laughs> you own the championship team. Can't you go to some place a little bit better than the like the corner store? Because I mean that was like going to the corner store. That wasn't even like going to the mm, high end store. You know what? I you, I'll say this. Let's start with Kraft <laughs> first. He wanted another ring. Ring around what? I can't tell you all that. But at the same time, he was looking for something that he found along the way. And I guess he figured, you know what? I might as well have my fun. But he ended up getting caught out there. So now he has to pay for that. R. Kelly just actually uh, bonded out today. But okay. the judge told, another judge told him he owes like $169,000. And child support. So, if that's not paid by the 6th of March, he might be headed right on back for another round. Now, with all these different things, people say, you know, they know he's been this, he's done this, he's done that. But they've let him get away with it for years. So, now, every road has a stop sign, and um, he just met his. So, it'll, it'll... We'll wait and see what happens this go round. Some eleven years ago, they acquitted him on, um, you know, the different charges. But let's see what happens this time. And then we go to, of course, Jesse Smollett. I say Smollett. Some people say Smollett. I don't really care because, first of all, like you said, I got a whole bunch of questions. You can write a check and put anything in the memo line, Jack, but you can't fake. Those brothers in the store buying ski masks, red hats, you know, like, I don't know if it was about your money, but you're not on that level of Terrence Howard or Taraji P. Henson. You're not there yet. So you have to crawl before you can walk. Yeah, you're on Empire. You sang some music, and some people love you, but you just don't graduate from kindergarten to the 12th grade. You just don't. You have to go through the, pro- the progression. To get to where you want to be Success is overnight for some It takes time for others You were getting there Nobody cares if you're gay What you do in your bedroom is your own business man. But you added that into it as well So now you've actually made Those who live alternative lifestyles And those who are of darker skin You've made them targets Because since something happened Really happened and they report it, the first thing is going to be the cynicism coming in. It's like, oh, are you you're doing what Justice Smollett did? No, but it's not my fault. He wanted some attention. You got it now. You went on Robin Roberts. You started cursing all over the place. Come on, dog. You're like, most people who've been in some unsavory places know when people start telling stories and they get all aggressive and hyped when they're talking to you when there's no threat around, talking about what they did and what they didn't do or what they should have done, the first thing you look, you'd be like, nah, bruh, good story, but try again. You know, so we'll see what plays out with that. He might get him a little something, too, unwanted. He's already lost the last two episodes of Empire. They, they wrote him out of the script, you know, so we'll see if they bring him back or if they write him all the way off, and it'll be his own doing. It'll be his doing. He goes from having a big check, because there wasn't no small check he had, to having, like, no check. 
And as a friend of mine said, he might be lucky if he can get a job in community theater. And I'm not even talking about the kind of community <laughs> theater 